Hail campers, and welcome to Camp Dragon Online presents From Daring to Dastanir. This actual play features our dungeon masters as hapless heroes adventuring through some of our old one-shots from the Camp Dragon Vault. We hope this gives you better insight into our dungeon masters' playstyles. So come with us on the adventurous path here at Camp Dragon. Tonight's session uses maps from Wizards of the Coast's Tactical Maps Reincarnated Asset Maps Pack, available now on Roll20.net. Alright, welcome everyone to today's session of Camp Dragon Online's new podcast from Daring to Dastanir. Uh, today's one-shot session, we're going to jump right into one of our adventures from the vault, A Sacred Bow. Uh, we hope you enjoy it, and you might see it around soon in a much more rehabilitated fashion. Uh, we have several people with us today, and we'll have them introduce themselves a little bit later, right after we jump into our intro. Adventurers from Mazakath, your guild has been hearing whispers of arms being stockpiled by the monster tribes that call the Onwood their home. Kobolds planting stakes and digging trenches outside their warrens, ogres and orcs collaborating to create catapults, and more and more woodwoats have been stalking from tree to tree, blood dripping from their bark. Travelers are going missing, settler claims are being set alight, yet no group will take sole credit. You and your compatriots, some new, some old, have been charged with uncovering the cause of this unrest and flushing out the instigators. Blood is on the hands of whomever these rabble-rousers may be, so quarter is not expected of you by your superiors. But if you have a chance to negotiate, it is well within your prerogative to do so. At this time, we'd like to introduce our adventurers for the day, as well as the people playing them. Race, why don't you start us off? Hi, everybody. My name is Race. Uh, my pronouns are they, them. And I will be playing Darmok. He is a dragonborn war cleric. Excellent. Uh, Bailey, please keep us going. Hi, everybody. My name is Bailey. Uh, my pronouns are also they, them. I'll be playing Lives in Shadow, um, a way of the open hand monk. Tabaxi. Excellent. Alan, please continue. Yeah, hi everyone. My name is Alan. He, him. Uh, I'm playing Shoshan today, who is a Heron Gone Wizard. Right, excellent. Greg, please. Hi, I'm Gregory. Uh, I'm going to be playing some weird stuff. Uh, pronouns are he, him. Uh, I'm actually playing Noel, who is a uh, shard of mischief from one of the deities of mischief in our lovely world set here. And none of this is going to make sense to anyone, but he is a Harlequin, uh, Domain of Mischief Fell Knight. Yay, third party stuff. Excellent. And William, please finish us off. Uh, hi, I am William, uh, he, him, and I will be playing Leah, a Dampier sorcerer. All right, excellent. As a quick reminder, I am your dungeon master, Daniel Yi, and my pronouns are he, him. Today, we'll be using a variety of third party content with a special focus on Greg's focus system. You might have seen something similar before in a couple of other settings, but as well, this one is uh, an official Greg Wonderland uh, system, and we love to see it and use it. Of course, the players will get to use it, but a couple other folk might get to use it as well that may not be player characters, so you know what? What goes around comes around. All right, as we continue our adventure, loggers and hunters point you in the general direction of the incidents but refuse to guide you in any further to the woods, as the shadows lengthen with the coming of night. As you tread further and further in, it becomes apparent that despite the time of day, it is far darker than it should be. Dark, even to your party members with low light vision. Suddenly, a lit torch appears like a beacon of warmth through the murky haze. And for those of you who are listening for the first time to one of our Camp Dragon settings, uh, during many of our normal sessions, we often show for our one-shots several YouTube clips of live-action actors and actresses performing as our NPCs. Uh, often these are introduction and then finale clips, and in this case we're going to watch my impersonation so as not to have to have you listen third-hand to a YouTube video. My impression of Aura the Wood Elf, played by our own Audra, a Camp Dragon uh, social media expert. All right. Please forgive me, uh, Audra, for my impression of your character, Ara. Adventurers, 
You have nothing to fear. The Wood Elves of this area are friends to your group. I'm sure you remember me, Ara the Wood Elf. Today, I hope you will lend me your might. I have had a great tragedy befall me. My mother passed away less than one hundred years ago. When she did, she left me her bow. It is my most prized possession. My people had a run-in with a group of hobgoblins. We won the day and protected the forest. However, in the fight, I was disarmed, and my mother's bow was taken. My honor is to protect these woods, and I am duty-bound not to leave this section of the forest to go after the hobgoblin that has taken my bow. I will gladly trade you gold for the retrieval of my bow. The hobgoblins commonly reside in the onwood, but I have heard them in a, another place entirely. To aid you on this quest, I will loan you each our best war horses. Please use them for this battle and return them safely with my bow. I hear that they are in a place called Bondaral, somewhere near here, but not quite in the Onwood, very far away in a different section of mountains. Hobgoblins, that would explain the behavior of the forest's more violent denizens, but there's something more going on here that merits a deeper investigation. You will swing yourselves on top of the elven steeds and weave through the trunks of the forest as you race to the hobgoblin's last known location, an old dwarven outpost known as Bondural. I'm going to need everyone to give me a history check. Oh, God. <laughs> First check of the day. Uh -huh. oh, I didn't pay God. attention in school. <laughs> Supposed to be good at that, but... Oh, goodness gracious. All right, so as of right now... Null and Leah, you are the only two that realize that the only thing that would serve in this particular area that you've been directed to for Bondaral, uh the only thing around here that would have served as the central location for an outpost uh, the size of Bondaral would be the fabled dwarven city of Amgarak. Most of the entrances to that place have been sealed off or forbidden, with good reason. Now, as you approach Bondaral and the small mountain it resides in, you smell two things, each one of you. Freshly tilled earth and the stench of an open forge. As the trees thin and your horses trot into a clearing, you realize that a humongous tunnel has been freshly carved into the rocky outcropping, just to the west of the entrance to the dwarf hold. I'm going to need everyone to go ahead and give me a nature or survival check. You can pick which one. Sorry, I have this this amazing image in my head right now just because Noel literally has the offensive trait sure. right now so creatures of two intelligence or lower are automatically hostile to him so like <laughs> everyone's getting on their war horses and he hears this this super weird dude like approaching a horse and the horse like trying to kill him the entire oh, absolutely. time we're like riding absolutely <laughs> it keeps trying to turn around while running forward and keeps trying to bite you and buck you off the entire time <laughs> when you oh, finally arrive in the clearing i imagine that it succeeds just enough to get you to finally get off the horse as no, it absolutely. Promptly, at promptly speeds away from you all right. Noah's never more uncomfortable when he's forced to ride an animal. <laughs> All right, I see a 17 from Leah, 13 from uh, Alan. Would you remind me how to pronounce your character's name again? Uh, Shoshan. Shoshan. Uh, an 8 from Darmok, and a 19 from Lives in Shadow. All right, hey, lives, lives in Shadow and Leah. Um, you identify that the humongous tunnel has been dug by something. Um, but you don't know of anything big enough at the time to create a ravine this big uh, that would be native to these parts. But it does appear to have been dug by something with claws um, rather than magically excavated or carved out. All right. Now, when it comes to the outpost itself, the wrought iron doors have been torn asunder by yet another something with massive talons or paws. Your horses appear to smell something and balk at both the doors and the tunnel. They will not enter with you. All right, and at this time, I'm going to go ahead and make it so that you can see the entrance to Bondural. For those of you who would rather venture into the large, humongous tunnel, um, I can adjust your tokens to do so. But at this time, you are all currently standing outside the crushed wrought iron doors of Bondural. Uh, Noah's going to, as per his usual inanity, uh, adjust the slightly, the mask on his face, which literally leaves no expression at all, just kind of two 
very oddly green glowing eyes. Uh, Horrifying. Gonna, yeah. <laughs> yeah, just, you know, slightly off-putting um, as he is otherwise wearing what appears to be like a suit of noble clothing and no armor and any equipment other than a single sword on his side. Uh, and he's just going to glimpse over at Lives in Shadow and give him like the strangest head, hilt, head tilt. Um, and then kind of bow eloquently and motion and say and go, heroes should proceed first. <laughs> yes, slightly off-putting might be an understatement. <laughs> As... Rock is going to look at Lives and Shadows and like, you know, I never get used to it when he does that. That's. Do you know this one? He has very strange eyes. And... Yeah. You know, the more you know him, the less you really do know. Mm-hmm. I just try to not think about it too much. I will also let you know that the hallways are unlit and dark currently, uh, as the sun is still setting. Mm, Perhaps no stranger than the who lives in shadow, perhaps. (laughs) This is... You first. This is lives in shadow's calling, after all. But it just kind of continues to give you looks and um, wearing full, um, almost like a, a duster or trench coat, kind of pulls up the collar and... As he kind of prowls, doesn't exactly go to like all fours, but does kind of get very low cat-like. Um, and I'll start trying to proceed, but I, I'm keeping an eye on Noel. Sure. And what is very obviously an attempt to um, unhinge lives in shadow, Noel is going to flash momentarily with a very subtle bit of white magic around his person as he looks ah, away. Oh my this. god. Yeah. You're gonna oh go god. ahead and cast mage armor then, Noel? Yeah, just mage armor. That's, that's all he's doing. That's perfect. <laughs> Uh, lives in shadows. The entryway is dusty, but the filth here has been disturbed recently. Carved stone doors lie to the left and right of you, and two pairs of smashed wooden doors flank a mosaic straight ahead. Various depictions of dwarven pantheons are carved in the open wall spaces of this room. Um, go ahead and give me a religion check, uh, Lives in Shadows, since you are the first person ahead right now. Oh god. Um... Wonderful. Yes, give me those intelligence checks. Let's see it. Nailed it. With a zero, Love Lives that. in Shadows just kind of like starts feeling some of the dirt. And after having done like a full scary cat pose, um, do to Noel, Noel, why the fuck are you right behind me? <laughs> <laughs> just being like, ah, as you like kind of flash and then I just kind of start paying attention to the dirt, I just mumble to myself, I do not believe in the gods, but they were once here. All right. All right, with you, with that roll, um, you don't. With, yeah, I'm going to take the zero for now, uh, rather than the <laughs> negative one or the nine. Uh, with the zero, lives in shadows. Uh, you don't really. You can obviously tell that the the reliefs on the walls are deific in nature, but you don't notice anything particular about them. Wonderful. Noel's going to lean in ever so slightly and be, perhaps we should add the dust between your ears, then you might have something there for once. But I will tell you this, uh, Lives in Shadows, while you're right here, also give me a survival check. Oh, okay. As I fucking pat away at, just like, full cat swipe fucking Noel. <laughs> Still with zero knowledge of who Noel is. <laughs> um... Though evidently looking for somebody that has these green eyes, um, not putting two and two together. And we got a... Oh, that was an errant religion check from before. (laughs) Oh, good lord. Oh, god. It is... There's the survival. Hey! All right. With a nine, this was... This is supposed to be a relatively level five adventure. Uh, A nine is still not going to tell you much, but I will tell you, you see two distinct footprints scattered in the dust... But with a nine, there's not much other information that you can tell. You just see that there is a lot of footprints and boot prints in the layers of dust that are inside this antechamber. There are agents of chaos afoot, I see. And I kind of start, like, motioning people to, like, full SWAT hand motions, like, move in. Well, he's not entirely wrong, is he? Darmok will follow right in behind that, you know, responding pretty well to the hand motions. Uh, as someone who both uh, doesn't fully trust uh, lives in shadows and also what? thinks time is a concept, um, as I mosey in behind everyone, can I have a second look just at things, even quietly so? Sure. Uh, what would you like to look at? Just, uh, very specifically, you said um, 
Uh, before you said the footprints, you said there were markings on the wall or on the like the way in. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, go ahead and give me a religion check as well. God, would I be allowed to guidance myself? Uh, uh, I'll guidance you if if otherwise. I would normally say yes. You can guidance yourself as long as one person has guidance in the group and is willing to share. You can assume generally that everyone's guidanced unless someone is specifically having a little bit of inter-party tension, which, okay. you know, we can always play into. But uh, uh, yes, I refuse you could... to give guidance to Null, so. <laughs> Absolutely fair. I don't think he'd accept it anyway. I'm yeah, pretty sure based. guidance given to Null would show up as a negative D4 anyway. <laughs> yeah, right here. <laughs> as we've established earlier. But yeah, go ahead. Hey, you can definitely welcome. give yourself a guidance. Uh, All right. Go ahead. All right. Let's see. A 22 plus a 1 with a 23. Yes, indeed. All right. So, so you notice a carving of a grinning dwarf making a rude hand gesture just inside the iron doors to your right. And as you look on the screen, uh, it's going to be on the left side of the screen. I meant sort of your right as you face into uh, the room. But, yeah, so you notice it just about here. Okay. Um, and you see with that, with the check that you made... This gives you that this is the trickster entity Null, but stylized as a dwarf. Or, in this case, might be a fragment of themselves, but worn by a dwarf. Uh, with being a passing that religion check to that degree, go ahead and also give me a perception check. All right, with a 19, you absolutely succeed on this check. You notice that this depiction of Null has both their nose and left hand fingernails protruding more than they should. Um, they can both be pressed, apparently. Oh. Uh, again, as the team makes their way in, I'm going to mosey from behind. I whisper to you, Noel, that um, as I'm still under this assumption that there is some agents of chaos um, nearby <laughs> warning you, saying that they have ways to trick the mind, befuddle the senses. If Do you would... They? <laughs> I recommend you take the left. I take the right, and then I'll oh, proceed certainly. to take to the I left. I actually take the wrong one to the left, <laughs> as opposed to the right. Uh, as they start to leave my vision, I'm gonna I'm gonna actually clue Leah into the fact that I've I've seen I've found these. Uh, can I just get a better idea of them? Uh, you said they they're protruding like they're they're buttons that can be pressed. Yes. Okay. Um, I don't want to be overly meta, but can I check to make sure that I don't, I'm not pressing the, the trigger to a bomb? Uh, give me an investigation check. Sure. Can I help them with that since I'm standing right there? Uh, Shoshan, you, uh, as far as you can tell, these triggers seem to instead, um, open something, but it doesn't appear to be incendiary. You don't detect any, you know, gunpowder residue or anything of that nature. Okay. I'm going to uh, let Leah know that it seems that way and that uh, I am in awe of their bravery and willingness to press the buttons to take a step here. All right. I will take a step forward and very bravely cast Mage Hand to push the buttons. <laughs> a door opens up. The dwarf carving grimaces as it is prodded and the mouth begins to open wide magically in a shout but it continues to stretch wider and wider until a small portal opens in the wall. Through it, you can see a pile of items, uh, including a, you know, not unsizable pile of gold. Right. Uh, but before you get there, for those of you who went down the cliff, a.k.a. Null and lives in shadows, uh, this short hallway turns sharply to the west and comes out into the side of the tunnel. The tunnel slopes gently away from the hallway, and the stones at the edge of the empty space appear to be loose. We recommend caution. Ooh. No, this looks dangerous. Should we go check it out? Perhaps you first. I am quite dexterous. Oh, so because yes. I was raised in the mountains where I trained to learn the way of the shadows. Be careful. Then I just try to like, is there any way to like scale down this at all? You could, but at this point you also can't see... Um, how far the tunnel protrudes down. Also, due to your sort of animal nature, I'm going to have you make a perception check right now. That I am good at, maybe. Uh, with that, you get a sense of fear. I'm going to need you, since you're able to detect, I'm going to need you to make a wisdom saving throw. Ooh. Oh my god. Oh, uh, we got wisdom. Don't have the save, so just... There we go. 
All right, with a 19, you do manage to overcome the primal sense of fear that resounds with you, as with uh, a 17 perception, you realize that whatever was here is a animal or of a size that you are not comfortable with. Oh. I whisper to you, Noel, there is agents of chaos, creatures of the enemy, enmity down there. I can no, sense Should we them. go check them out then? It would be our duty. I kind of like turn to you, Darmok, saying, You, what are you in terms of the fighting? Do you know how to defeat agents of chaos? I'm really good at hitting things with a mace, but, you know, I, I'm always down for some chaos bashing. Do you have the wings? Can you fly? No, that's... No, I, I wasn't lucky enough to get that one, but... Taken from birth. Yeah. Likely uh, by agents of chaos. I understand. Yes, it was the agents of chaos. Dan, how far away is this place? <laughs> is, it, is it 15 feet? Can I see, like, a place to just go? Or, or race? No, that's... Really, I so absolutely love it. Yeah, so that, so to you, that just appears to be like sheer tunnel wall. It's just part of the curve. Um, at this point, the only part that seems you're able to stand on besides the slope here at the bottom is the part you're on right now. Hmm. This just sort of looks like more curving wall over to the side here. Is this like, can you stand here? Uh, you would be able to at the bottom. But I should let you know that it's it's a pretty deep tunnel, and so this distance is about you know thirty feet down or so at its at its bottom at the bottom of the trench. Okay. Hmm. Boring. That's how it is. Do I? Does it look like it has? Um, so you said about thirty feet. With the perception check you rolled before, you also it also looks to you like it might be very difficult to get back up. Uh, ah. Once you were down there, without some sort of assistance. Hey, Lizen, um, let's go check some of the other stuff. Then we can go beat these chaos guys. Um, that way we can like kind of get a better idea of the situation. This is wise counsel, my friend. Kind of like pats your shoulder, um, and then just skitters off. Oh, Null's back. And Lizen Shadow, did you find something interesting? Walking, walking back in here. Looking at these two, he's going to tilt his head and almost completely ignore the question. Like he doesn't even register it before he looks at the door and looks at them and kind of points at it and shrugs. Ah, yes. Very clear. Have you been befuddled by the door now? No. He's going to open it. <laughs> so, by the way, we are still sitting where Leah and um, Shashan opened up a room that had golden items in it. Mm -hmm. um, which... At this point, uh, Lee and Shashan, since you've pretty much been ignored by the other party members due to your <laughs> discovery, uh, what would you like to do with this pile of gold and items? Uh, what kind of items are in there? <laughs> well, I'll need both of you to roll a d10 for me to show you what is still salvageable from this pile of essentially decaying dwarven artifacts. All right, a four and a one. All right, Leah, you encounter a set of dwarven dice worth about 15... Uh, gold pieces, um, and as you roll them, they also appear to have a strange knack to always roll the high number. And with a one, you encounter an art piece, uh, Shushan, that is essentially a dwarven abacus, worth about 30 gold. You also encounter 250 gold that normally would be split among all your party members, but since it's just the two of you... Uh, if you'd like to, you can either keep half for each of yourselves or attempt to distribute it to your other party members. What do you think, Shoshan? <laughs> uh, I'm I'm happy to split it, for sure. Between the two of us or between everybody? Uh, between everybody. Ah, okay. I think we should. Heroic. Fantastic. That is very kind of you. So, what you encounter, Null, as you open this random room, as the stone door to this room creaks open... Your senses are immediately assailed with the sickly, sickly sweet stench of a dead body. And you do, in fact, notice a gray bloodless corpse in the northern part of the room. I'm just going to walk right over to it. Yeah, go ahead it wasn't and me. give me a medicine check. Wow. Unexpected. Damn. Nice. <laughs> with, with that, um, you know detect that this body is gray and bloodless, but the reason it's gray isn't because there isn't any blood in it. While it has been exsanguinated, 
The skin appears to have been gray to begin with. Uh, this does appear to be a Duragar. Uh, it also has an immense beard, and you find something inside its beard with that medicine check as you poke and prod it. So I will give you access to the note that you find inside the beard. You you might might still have certain sections of beard attached to it, given how you ripped it out. Uh, it reads, you all have the ability to read it yourselves now, but I'll go ahead and narrate it to you. Uh, to Horgar Iron Thew, long may he dig. I suspect that this goblin filth plans to go back on their word soon. Keeping the elves and man-things distracted by organizing raids is one thing, but they know too much. They know the riches that await us in the halls of the Holdfast. They'll turn on us the moment we break through. This is owed to us. This is our birthright. We slaved away under that illithid filth for generations. The weaklings that carved Amgorak could not hold it, but we shall. Never should have hired the Hobgoblin Company. Should have kept this endeavor in-house. They'll be making a move soon, my king. I'll tell the brothers to stand ready. Signed, Ermcomb Shadowsteel. That's quite the ominous Yelp review. So, so do we think this gentleman was Horogar or Ermcomb? Is there any way to, like, insight that, or... Do sure. it. I mean, you can cool. you can try. Uh, you can definitely do an insight check, and if the roll is high enough, I'll give you a little bit into the state of what you see. I'll look at the corpse, see if he looks, I guess, in any way notable. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Noel's just kind of kind of like fade off. He's <laughs> kind of done in here. He'll let you guys do your thing. With that twenty-eight insight, uh, the trappings of what this uh, dwarf corpse is wearing leads you to believe that they are somebody of very high stature. Normally, you'd probably make, like, an investigation check for this, but, you know, I, I, I did what you do right now. So Heck just yeah. Yes, yeah, so you will believe that this particular person is of uh, great wealth and status. Um, I, I just simply, I guess, to myself, as everyone else is kind of vacating the room, to you, Darmok, say, uh, this one believes that this was no courier, but indeed... A person of importance. Be on your guard. And just kind of like, leaves. Listen, Shadow just keeps an eye on Noel. <laughs> Tr trying to kind of get into your flank at any point. For no real reason. To turn around and just stare at you. Every All time right. You do. Noel, this door is also made out of stone. Uh, as you open it up, or did you? Do you open it up? Yes, you have. Leah. Leah went in. Oh, Leah opened it up. Yeah. Pardon me. Thank you, Leah. This room is mostly empty. It appears to have one point in the nest of some kind. Uh, instead, it is currently lined with loose straw and the bones of something at least as big as your horses. I'll need a survival or nature check if you want to investigate the bones and loose straw. Uh, with the four, Leah, uh, you find um, some very large droppings and some paw prints, and as you cast around with the four... Uh, you get the sensation that whatever was in here was similar to whatever was in the large tunnel, uh, and it appears to have the same rank smell that startled your horses when they detected it before you did. I wouldn't go in there. There's nothing of note, and it smells really bad. Darmok would also try want to try and uh, take a crack at that, too. If that's take a right. crack at investigating the room? Yeah, I yeah. Always, I'll usually allow two checks for things. You can give me a survival check since Leah rolled the nature. Well, apparently I can't roll anything above a 10 today. With a 9, uh, you have pretty much the same... Yeah, fair enough. ...the same assumptions that Leah has made. Shall we get on with finding this bow? Let's uh, try the other path. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, Shattered One, perhaps to the right, lead us on in your bravery. <laughs> Very emboldened by any type of compliment, uh, lives in Shadow just says, Indeed, the shadows have made me brave. And I just kind of start going down this way, looking around. That's left. <laughs> hey. <laughs> I look to you. This, yes, is your left, but not mine. I decided many a year ago to switch them so as to befuddle the agents of chaos. Yes, the agents of chaos weren't expecting you to chaotically change the directions. I, I, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. This one knows their ways. We'll trick them. With this, as your hallways stretch out from the pair of smashed doors you step over, I'm going to need the first person, I believe in this case lives in shadows, to give me a perception check. I be sniffing. 18. Alright, now this perception check specifically is based off of listening. So, okay. 
With this 18, you can make out the faint echoes of conversation in a couple different languages. Uh, what languages, Lives in Shadows, do you speak? Oh, I got Undercommon, Elvish, and Common. All right. With Undercommon, you do hear somebody arguing in Undercommon about contracts being renegotiated and work quotas not being met. However, there is another language you do not recognize. You also notice, as you look down here, a door right about here. I'll try to, like, kind of do the, the classic, like, fist to try to tell, um, tell him when, like, I hear something. And then, like, ears flickering, I say, Agents of Chaos, up ahead, other room. Sure. Uh, I will tell you also that it does. they appear to be echoing from further down the hallway that you were in, not necessarily from the room I just indicated. No. Oh, I just wanted perhaps. to make sure you were aware of that door right there. That I see. supposed to be an I, obvious door. I thought you were just pointing at the door as that was where it... So then that further down, I will say, as yeah. opposed to at the door. So it's, it's if for those of you who can see the ping vaguely, it's yeah. you know, around these sorts of corners. Yeah, mm. You hear perhaps it echoing some, through the corridors. Perhaps some reconnaissance is necessary. Or would you prefer to do that yourself, Grand Hero? Yeah, I... I'm not that stealthy. You seem like you're pretty... Uh, pretty quiet as far as uh, as far as it goes. Am I uh, out of character? Am I the best stealth here? I take it uh, at disadvantage. Noel can literally turn invisible as an action. So. Okay, so other than <laughs> Noel, um, who I don't think I trusted you, you'd be like, oh, like you'd turn around and see a bullrog and be like, oh no, guys, it's clear. Yeah, he yeah. can, but do we trust him as a different thing? Right now, mm-hmm. Noel is very trusted by Lives and Shadow, who does say, if you think that your skills outweigh mine, the agents of chaos will never see you coming. Oh, never. I would never propose that I could do anything better than the pure vengeance of justice that stands before me. This uh, is true. Greg, I'm going to need you to roll for sarcasm. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah, I'm That's on a deception check. Uh, so yeah, him with that deception, deception I got uh, very low. <laughs> before they get too far ahead, since these three are clearly the ones that like to go in first, I'm going to go ahead and give them aid. <laughs> Beautiful. But remember, Dan, I cannot literally roll below a 19 on deception. So oh, I'm, I'm well always aware. always willing to roll deception. <laughs> I am well aware. All right, so you're giving it to Darmok, Null, and Lives in Shadows? Yep, Darmok, Null, and Lives in Shadows, yes. <laughs> All right, heroes, go ahead and add that five to your max hit points. Up to 53. With that deliberation, then, I look to Darmok and Null, like, close confidant, saying, I scout the head. If I do not return... Consider me dead, and begin the second plan. And I don't elaborate what that means. Can I stealth my way down here? I'm actually, just to help him out, Dan, I'm going to legit turn invisible and follow him. Oh, excellent. Do you want to go past the door that was indicated? Yes. I'm more intrigued by the noise. Sure. Go ahead and roll a stealth check for me. Twelve is satisfactory. No fucking way. Don't worry, your your critical fail is a twelve. There, <laughs> yeah, for this stealth check, it, I mean you're also invisible, so uh, you are a rather noticeable sort of predator-like shimmer. Um, but you are, you know, you are invisible, so you know your party can tell where you are invisibly. But we'd have to roll again for other people to to check. So, uh, yeah, lives in shadows. You encounter more rubble over here and more hallway over here. Darmok is going to turn back to Soshan and uh, Leon's like, well, they're gone, and uh, I guess we're going to take up the rear. Okay. As noted, Lifts and Shadows, when you made that perception check with your very high roll, it was very faint that you could hear it, which is why you ah. occasionally hear the word contract or work quota in Undercommon. You can't hear the entire conversation because it is very far away. Mm. I shall it, is still, it is still echoing from down around this corner. Is it safe to assume that I noticed that Noel is following me, or do I just have no idea? Due to the fact that they rolled really well, uh, yes, you do notice that they are following you due to the fact, but they are still clearly invisible. So um, you see sort of like the shimmering of light as like a form follows you. Understanding totally, how... I'm sorry, can we totally have the glowing green eyes visible to him? If you'd <laughs> like to, that. absolutely, yeah. <laughs> just that, that's all I want. <laughs> just looking at, at, at Noel... But understanding that, like, how cats get embarrassed if you, you catch them sneaking up on something sure. doesn't say anything. Um, just tries to, like, not I'm get... Full uh, going, uh, going full yaw yeah, absolutely. Um, yeah. So, 
Lives in Shadows, what you see here are stairs descending um, down the carved stone corridor. Um, and you can still hear voices echoing from down the down the mm. stairs, but uh, you still haven't noticed anybody yet. Damn, they are like hidden down here. Like um, I said, the noises were very, very faint. You notice another corridor that splits off here as well. Another door. With another door, yes. Uh, you can now see at the base of the stairs, you see a pile of rubble. Uh, with a very small fissure uh, among the rubble that you could technically slide through. And it is where the noises are still occasionally, you hear the word, um, and you occasionally hear some curse words in Undercommon, uh, very faintly. Give me an intelligence check. Not a saving throw, just an ability check. Oh, this is going to be good. Oh, this is going to be great. What do I... Okay, I'll take 10. With a 10, you believe that the reason you can hear things is due to echoes bouncing off of this, and you have a suspicion that the voices that you were hearing might be at the very, very end of this complex, and you're pretty much just hearing more and more stone echoes bouncing off. So the voices you're hearing might be very far away. More agents of chaos, i.e. doors, exist down this way. Um, so you I... have the door that's back near your party and the door that's in front of you now. I kind of say to myself, but also trying to catch Noel's ear on it, um, since I, I, I have a, an idea where he is, uh, to circle back and grab the rest of the friends. Sure. It's at this point that I would send a message out being like, hey, have you found anything? As you, oh my god, whispers in my brain. Um, lives in shadows, kind of like, hunkers very aggressively. And, like, full, trilling, um, bristled hair. They have infiltrated my mind. The shadows do not protect me anymore. We are compromised! Then I just start sprinting this way. Um, until I run into Dormak, like, actually. We gotta put a bell on you. Oh full my God. on hit you, <laughs> um, midway sprinting as I try to full kind of pounce run. Dharmak, uh, were you. Investigating that door? What's this? I noticed you yeah, walked right Yeah, I, I was thinking, uh, well, they were yep. off um, in in Stealthland. Uh, I was thinking sure. um, Darmok would absolutely walk up to this door and, and, and check to see if it uh, is any way kind of uh, like either locked or uh, if there's any kind of alarm on this door. Uh, give me an investigation check. For sure. Ah, looks like a door. With a five, it is, it is a stone door and it appears to be heavy. Hmm. Well, you know what? I may not read too many books, but I can bench pretty decent, so I am going to attempt to open the door. All right. Uh, as you do so, it just swings open. Mm -hmm. It is. It does require effort on your part, but it does indeed uh, swing open. And as you look inside, as you shove the door, open the door to this room, you immediately notice the large spores floating in the frigid air that slaps you in the face as the door opens. This appears to be some kind of compost room, covered from wall to wall with mold, fungi, and some strange moss. From the doorway, you can see skeletons of animals and humanoids that have been stripped clean. Hmm. I'm regretting opening this door. Uh, I think... <laughs> uh, is, do I recognize the type of fungus or anything? Give me a nature check. For sure. With a 10? Yeah, I like mushrooms. I mean, they taste good. Yeah, with a 10, <laughs> um, you do notice several types of mushroom that... While they do eat dead and rotting flesh, wouldn't necessarily harm you um, as a as a living, breathing, you know, alive being. Um, it might give you some allergies, but it wouldn't have a drastic impact on you. Um, no halo of spores here, as far as you can tell, with a ten. Leo, what do you? Uh, do, should I go in and take a look around, see if I can poke around, uh, poke around anything from? Uh... From here, or do you think we're uh, pretty good here? You suffer from allergies. There's a lot of spores in there. Yeah, I didn't bring my Claritin, and like I'm starting to get a little watery. Um, yeah. Well, like, I mean, there might be something useful in there, but uh, if it, if you feel that your safety would be affected, then I think you should not go in. Should I take a con save to see if I'm if I'm stuffy? Uh, no. <laughs> that wouldn't be a concept, but if you'd like to to investigate the room a little more, you can make a perception check to see inside sure. the room a little more. Oh, gosh. 
Oof, I'm, I'm, I'm officially no longer making any checks right. today. <laughs> With a natural one to give you a four on your ability check, I, uh, I will say that you do see something potentially glittering in there, but you can't tell exactly what it is or really where it is, as the glitter almost sort of catches your eye out of the corner, and you're not able to pinpoint exactly in the mess of it's mushrooms. Because my eyes are getting watery because of the eye allergies, that's what it is. Potentially. <laughs> So what would you all as a group like to do? Uh, Darmok, are you conveying most of this information to your party? Oh, yeah. I'm going to say, oh, I mean, some, some, some looks shiny in there, but it's up to you guys. Shiny, you say? Yeah, yes. Um, I, I didn't see any red dots, but, uh, you know, there, there did look to be like something shimmery in there. After you, mighty hero. <laughs> this is no heroics, but shinies are always to be preserved. One of the great wonders of life. Sir, lives in shadows. Are you going to go into the room and look around? Oh, yeah. All right. Go ahead and give me a perception check. Let's see what I can do. I'm following him in, by the way. Are you also going to look around, Null, or are you just following for now? Uh, I'm just following him. Trailing behind lives in shadows, <laughs> trying to creep them out? Sure. He's the hero. Living in my shadow. Sure. Uh, <laughs> Stay safe, everyone. Yeah. I'm going to turn over to Sean. Like, did you see the glowing eyes following behind? <laughs> Sorry, Bailey just finally got what Noel was doing, and it's just, it makes me so happy. Thank you so much. <laughs> I've been thinking about it the whole time. I was like, I'll say it eventually. <laughs> but do I find anything with 25? Yes, uh, you find a pile of gold, about 300 gold pieces in the southwest corner. With that 25, though, I am going to need you to give me a dexterity saving throw. Since you rolled so high a perception, you notice among the gold something that is... Rather threatening, it puts your fur on end, but I am going to need that deck save right now. Oh, yeah. All right. Uh, do you have advantage for any reason? Um, I'm, that's what I'm trying to take a look at really fast. Is this considered everyone that's a big deck save? Um, there is a key thing I think I can do. Maybe. No, maybe not at this level. Nope, okay. nothing. We're good. All right, I'm going to need you to give me... Uh, unfortunately, your dex did not succeed with an 11. I am now going to need you to give me a constitution saving throw, which, Null, you are also going to have to make. I'm down with that. Let's do this, boy. Con save, you said? I did. Is this a magical effect? It is not. Okay. So not disadvantage. Still not good. Not okay. Disadvantage. <laughs> not disadvantage. Still not good. Yeah. Okay, so with that, um, as you look at the pile of gold in the corner, um, and you look as to what it is sitting in, you notice that it's sitting in a large pile of a brownish mold. And mm. as you step closer, it explodes outwardly at you, um, racing along the floor towards you and up your body. So... Lives in shadows. You're gonna take 38 cold damage. What kind of fucking oh, damage roll was that? Holy shit! Wow. Like no. 10, 9, 10, 9? That's oh, a no. powerful mold right yeah. there. No, like... you take 19 cold damage. My god. <laughs> Man, I'm so I glad I didn't walk in that room. Um, yeah, damn, that one's gonna... I'll just take that one right on... Uh, I, I'd like to imagine this is just going to trigger wrathful. I just start punching at mold, um, screaming, <laughs> this is how my grandmama went. No. <laughs> sure. I refuse. Taking 38 damage, I'm down to 15 health. Damn. Holy shit. That hurt. Oh, my fur. All right. Now, we're not technically an initiative because this technically isn't a creature. Right. It's more of a trap effect. So... In this moment, what would the two of you, before things continue to progress, what would you like to do? Uh, well, there's nothing else in this room. There's just some mold and some now frozen cat and mask dude, right? Yeah, you um, are also currently covered in the brown mold, but you simply managed to fight off its heat-draining effects on you. Mold's uh -huh. going to just very calmly brush himself off. That's uh, just kind of, you know, remove it that It does not brush situation. off your body. Oh. Ooh, In that case, maybe. we're going to start taking this seriously. And it is try currently and sort of like happening. the mold tendrils are sort of seeping into your frame as right. it's currently uh, trying to suck the heat out of your body. 
can we grab an arcana check or an insight or a nature to try and figure Absolutely. This out? Nature, please. You may both roll a nature check. And I will okay. say, Darmok and Leah, you can see this happening as well. You can also roll a nature check. All right. Null and Darmok. Null, uh, with a... I've six, seen this before. With a 16, uh, the big thing that appears to you, Null, is that uh, it's clearly sucking your heat out, is the big thing. Uh, Darmok, with a natural 20, uh, despite your bonus of zero, so you still get a 20 on this one. Um, you are familiar with the concept of brown mold, uh, and that is, you know, there there are rumors at the Mazcath Guild headquarters that there's a specific type of brown mold out there that feeds off of heat, uh, and the area around it is cold as it continually draws heat in. Uh, using fire around it is a very bad idea, but occasionally using cold magic uh, can mm -hmm. sometimes defeat, oddly enough, the thing that creates cold around it as it sucks in heat. Um, but with that, I am now going to need uh, a deck save from Darmok due to their proximity to Ooh. No. Darn. <laughs> Woo! Fuck. Darmok, you do Dark manage, as the, as the brown mold starts to race out of the room at your feet, you do manage to dodge to the side. I'm going to need you to move backwards about five feet, either sure. up or down, uh, to the side of Leah. I've seen this before. We got to use cold to kill it. I'm pretty sure. And I'm going to need another Constitution saving throw from Null and Lives in Shadows. I also, come, I can kill you as well. <laughs> Third scene. Okay, that is another four d10 cold damage. I will also tell you, Lives in Shadows, that you did succeed. So you're only going to take eleven cold damage. Null, you're going to take twenty three. No, go ahead and also uh, make sure that you add a point of focus as well. Mm -hmm. um, now, would with my 20 on nature, would I know that this mold is sensitive to sunlight by any chance? Uh, yeah, actually, uh, sunlight makes it extremely aggressive and it proliferates mm -hmm. very easily under sunlight. I uh, should also, cast daylight. Bailey, go ahead and also take a point of focus for when you failed that earlier con save as well. Nope. Um, okay. As mentioned, cold damage destroys it. Uh, heat is bad. Uh, I'm going to look to Soshan and Leah. Do either of you guys have anything that does any kind of like cold or kind of icy kind of thing? Because I am, I absolutely do not. Uh, as you ask, she's gonna uh, Shoshan's gonna turn to their hand, and and you'll see a little kind of little frost kind of like tingling on their fingertips. Yeah, I, I'll move I think, up out uh, of the way. Right. The, the, whatever that is. I'm Blast and I am gonna I, I am gonna reach for it. I am I am still gonna apply uh, cure wounds to null as well. Sure. Uh cure wounds, your cure wounds still has a distance of touch, correct? Yep. Alright. Wait, let's uh let's not do that. Let's get rid of this first yeah. and then do it. So Noel's gonna break his Oh, I'm saying like after after the, the ice yeah. attack. Sure. Is, uh, uh Shoshan, what would you like to do as the person who seems to have the ability to deal cold damage? Uh first things first, as they kinda come out of the room looking we'll say disheveled. <laughs> um Shoshan is going to um at this point if they've ever ventured with, with them before um, they certainly, this is not a new thing, but Shoshana is going to say, uh, it's always worth taking our time. And then, uh, I will offer, uh, mechanically Ray of Frost, uh, for whoever needs it. Uh, I wish I had Ice Knife, but I don't. Right, blast me with that Ray of Frost, baby. Let's do this. Uh, yeah, and then when you go down, we'll just bring you back up. And I got six HP left at this point. Who cares? What's <laughs> right? No, <Damn>. right, yeah. <clears throat> Sure. Uh, 17. Um, uh, well, you could also choose to let this. Yeah, I'm going to let it hit me. I want to take the damage. So. Sure. <clears throat> also, the brown mold in the space you are standing in also uh, dies. And with the frost on the ground, the brown mold can't advance out of the room. Uh, lives in shadow. What would you like to do? Are, would you like to move it all before you? Oh, yeah. Try to step over. Um... Nolan, in the fleeting bit of consciousness, try to close this door, if at all possible. Yeah, absolutely. I would uh, say, blast me. You close the door behind you, and I'll let Shashan make another roll. Um, 
<laughs> get better at it. Choose to to let you hit. <laughs> I, I see. Just doing a little bit more damage to me. It's all right. <laughs> mm-hmm. That's how it is. Bunny rabbit versus cat. I mean, as I wasn't. You, I was going down. You'll hear Shashan say, "It's only because I know you can take it." We'll also say for the purposes of this exercise that this is also non-lethal. Normally spells technically are able to be going for non-lethal damage, but we'll say it's not lethal for, you know, not trying to make your roll death saves right out of the gate. But I'm likewise collapsed on top of Null, or near Null. It's funny because both Bailey and I as players are like, we'll roll death saves, it's fine, whatever. Oh, right, I'm like, like, sure, man. (laughs) (laughs) I'm so down to die. Oh, I I believe you are, but, you know, I'm, uh, given after I just put you through that brown mold room, which... 38 damage, Dan. 38 out of 40. Hey, potential. hey that's a uh, that's a cannon. Uh, brown mold is a time honored uh, old old uh, adventurer's trap. All right, uh, yeah. So Greg, go ahead and take 10 points of healing and lives in shadows. Please take eight. Pop Beautiful. yourselves back up. Oh, good. You're not dead. There is right. nothing that the matter cannot do over the mind. So and... I'll let everyone now make a perception check. Uh, none of you had a passive high enough to find uh, the thing earlier with just a passive. But everyone can go ahead and make a perception check now. Damn, my 19 wasn't enough? Shit. The 19 was just short. <laughs> or something like that. I got close. Right. Hey, Leah, the veil of time separates for you. <laughs> <laughs> all right, Leah, Shoshan, and Lives in Shadows, you all notice at the edges of this short corridor, uh, on the ceiling are a couple of runes of Dwarvish that all crackle with frost. It appears to you to almost be sort of like a safeguard against perhaps this particular substance spilling out and go recklessly across the entire hold. All right, what would you like to do now? Can I try to do some quickened healing? Just yes, to, Okay. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll meditate while you guys decide. I'm now writing in the back as I just con- I continue repeating the mantra, which is the opposite of what most monks would do: of mind over matter. It's matter over mind. Um, you don't. You, <laughs> the body ignores the brain if you try hard enough. Sure. Uh, query: Do any of you speak dwarvish or can read dwarvish? I should say. Yeah, I can understand it and read it. Uh, <clears throat> no. Unfortunately, no. no. All right, good to know. Oh, okay. Uh, as you proceed along the corridor, um, lives in shadows. You can't hear the like low, low muttering anymore that you heard earlier, bouncing off the walls and echoes. Is there any dwarvish or elvish to read in? Uh, outside of those runes on the ceiling, not as of present. Very well. The voices were coming from down here, so shall we? <laughs> All right. As you enter into the small offshoot corridor, Null lives in shadows. This door seems strangely untouched for the most part. There are some dwarven runes at the top, but other than that, nothing stands out. Null, since you said you can read dwarfish, at the top the runes read, Over talkative teeth boxes inside, don't open. Hmm. We're not supposed to open some boxes, but perhaps curiosity never hurt anyone. Certainly never not- a cat. I'm pretty sure Curiosity specifically ignores cats. So lives in shadow. Why don't you go ahead and uh, and go? Uh, why don't you go ahead and go all in on it? It, it, guys? He's only got a six intelligence. Yeah, he's if you enable him, he's gonna. He will just. He'll go for it. Are you gonna open the door then? Lives in shadows. I just like. I'm sorry. Lives in shadow barely qualifies for a lot of Null's abilities because his intelligence is almost like under the threshold, and it's just so good. If I oh, if actually, I just lost a little bit more, I would be immune to your chaos, and that's my goal. They're just in that sweet <laughs> spot between your offensive and your uh, your other abilities. Okay, I- I'm just going to open this one. I'm going to give the cat a break. All right. As you open <laughs> the God. door, uh, inside you see three pristine chests with shelves of raw, unrefined ore behind them, as well as what appear to be two glass bottles with red liquid inside. Ah, so this is very much a trap. We can either spring it and be greedy or move on and not have any fun. Useless rocks, I see. Or it can be very useful for the right person. Or Especially what? if you're in a boat. How does or work? And, uh-huh. Darmok, that's your pun for the day. That's <laughs> cut off. <laughs> I gotta use it for the word or. Um, uh, Noel's just gonna turn back to the others and go, shall we initiate some fun or would you like to move on? Yeah, be, be our guest. 
Go ahead. Justice has no yeah. time for fun, but yes. <laughs> All right, sorry, let me I'm going to do a quick cone here. Thinking that he knows what this room is about to be due to what he read. Sure. Uh, I'm, uh, uh, actually, just he's going to turn around and just shush you, uh, lives in shadow back a little bit, like you would with a cat that you want to move. Just like, come on, come on. Well, come I certainly on. like tend to like close to people's backs whenever I'm like just like, looming because I'm also seven foot something. So <laughs> like. <laughs> So we're going to take a step back, and hopefully these creatures have an intelligence score, and we're going to go ahead and either be hilarious or line blast. All right. <laughs> I ignore the two fell damage that I didn't take that off. All right. Apparently and what is, the, what is the what is the minimum intelligence score needed to... Uh... Uh, God, you're asking these questions like I should know my abilities and stuff. Hold on, Mind Blast. Now, there is no intelligence required for this one. It just does psychic damage. So if they're, you know, objects, uh, well, it won't you know. do anything. Oh, of course. Yeah, as <laughs> you do this, uh, all three chests suddenly morph uh, into essentially more like faces with teeth, tongues, eyes, as they all scream in Dwarvish. <laughs> it hurts! <laughs> Oh, that what went well. What did you do? Agents of chaos among us. And you see three mimics inside. No, stop it! Stop it! Don't do that! Leave us alone! Oh, you speak? If they speak in Dwarvish, I, I'm I'm fully convinced that they're speaking the equivalent of Aramaic to my to mine ears. No, um, here if you don't mind stepping to the side, I I can do my own kind of uh, area of effect right here. We'll just kind of clear uh, they're this out. asking us to stop. Are you going to continue fighting them? Oh, I mean, it's very tempting. I'm going to be honest. Usually, when boxes start chattering at me, that's a reason to break the box. I'm a to so, Sean. <laughs> Perhaps we should listen to them instead of undo violence if they requested us to cease. That would be the orderful way. <laughs> mm. Well, okay, yeah, I'll, I'll, I guess the peaceful option. Uh, if you want to, if you want to attempt it, you're probably a bit more well spoken than I. Very well. I'll enter, and if I die, well, then this will just be fun. Hello. Why? Why are you a headache? It hurts. Well, because you're disgusting to look at. You're you're dis <laughs> disgusting. Oh, that's fair. I'll do. Uh, what perhaps are you doing here? Are you guardians or are you simply containers? Is this my shop? Uh, says the one in the middle. The shop. We buy items here. No, it's my shop. Says another one. Your shop. So we buy items from you. Hey, what you, what you got? I have not much at all, actually. Perhaps you could just give me things, and I'll be on my way. That's an exchange of commerce. Don't have anything to give? Hmm, I'm not one of material possessions. I suppose I have a tool and some clothing. Perhaps some water for those ailing minds? Uh, no, the one in the middle of the three of this little arc goes, You got riddles? Do I have riddles? I do indeed. I have a few riddles for you, my friends. No, give me a quick perception check. <clears throat> okay. Uh, let's see here. Perception. Nice. Nailed it. Uh, with a 12, so excited about the riddles. they're not very <laughs> stealthy. So with a 12, you notice the one that is immediately adjacent to you has been slowly trying to stick out its very large purple tongue to like wrap around your ankle. Uh, Null is going to turn his mask at it, and he's going to, with the a sheath of his blade, like, tap it like you would someone that's like, you know, he like gives it a bit of a slap. Sure. Mm -hmm. uh, it immediately, despite the stickiness, it immediately retracts in fear. Mm, none of that now, unless you wish for more headaches. I want meat, says the box oh. that just tried to wrap its tongue around you. You're very different than the others. I like you. How about those two? Do they qualify as meat? Uh, sticky and snarko taste bad. But still meat, yes, and that's what you desire. Perhaps you would prefer to eat their meat instead of ours. Yeah, go ahead and give me a persuasion check. <laughs> ah! Uh, okay. Uh, you know what? Let's, uh... Sorry, oh, persuasion. This is not what I'm good at. Uh... Yeah, let's use a focus here. Give myself a plus two for the hell of it. 
Sure. Now! With a natural ah, 20 go. for 23. a... 23. Um, the mimic that's right next to you uh, looks over at the other two. Says, you're... Your meat worse than the than their meat. My meat stings. Ugh, bad meat. You, you got other meat? Yes, I'm staring at them, and he's going to point at these guys. Uh, they're they're full of other things. Uh, your meat your meat's worse though, huh? It hurts when you try to eat it. And it's just going to retract its tongue into its own face and, as far as you can tell, turn back into a chest. Occasionally an eye pokes up at you. So, it seems no longer interested in slyly trying to eat you, though. Even with a 23, you probably can't convince it to eat the other two in the room. As it's not much larger than them. And they could probably take it if they work together. This is so boring. Is that all you do, is exchange riddles for gear? Perhaps items? I got shinies! So, a riddle for a shiny? Good riddle. Very well. Uh, would we like to exchange some? Give me a riddle! Very well. You measure my life in hours, and I serve you by expiring. What am I? I don't know! <laughs> Very well, then. That's worth some items, correct? And uh, you, it'll reach up with a tongue and grab two things off the shelf. And you'll have the option to buy one of them. Um, one, it gives you a strange piece of ore, um, or you can take a greater healing potion. He's going to lean back into the room. Would you like a boring potion or an interesting piece of rock? I kind of want rock. I'm currently afraid Rock. of Noel for having spoken a riddle. I think that it's like <laughs> about as evil as as can be, and I, I'm fully whispering Dermak. We do not know this one, but he knows the riddles, like agents of chaos. Yes, I have so. my doubts. Noel is totally the guardian you have to answer the riddle of, but for some reason he's adventuring with the good guys. So, <laughs> <clears throat> so I, I give no answer to Rock or Liquid. No heard rock, so he's going to pick the rock. <clears throat> All right. Uh, the mimic hands over the very now sort of sticky, slobbery piece. Give me an intelligence check. No. This is where I actually, well, I don't want to say anything because then I'm going to roll. Oh, you're going to jinx yourself. Run, right? Do it. Yeah. Jinx yourself. No. Yep. I did it because mm -hmm. that's a natural one Shit. for me because a one or a two is a critical failure. <laughs> yes, indeed. Um, it's a rock. It seems like a nice geological curiosity. Perfect, I'm going to toss it to Darmok. Oh, sweet! <laughs> Fuck yeah, rocks! Darmok, I love rocks! Darmok, give me an intelligence <laughs> check. I'm plenty happy with the rock. Do we need to know what it is? I think cool rock is like right? its own reward. Perfect. Darmok, oh, with, a sweet rock. with a seven, <laughs> it's yeah. a sweet rock. Hand, Dude, hand, this is hand to me. <laughs> you want to check out Let's... this sick rock? <laughs> <laughs> no, the mimic that is essentially near the bottom of the arc, the one farthest away from you, goes, You got anything sweet? No, that's disgusting. You should watch your mouth. I like candy. I think I'm done with this room. All of you are free to do what you will. Goodbye. I've got an almond joy if you, if you want it. The one on the right bites, by <laughs> the way. Um, Liz and Shadow tries to whisper to you, Darmok. Still, of course, worried about Noel, but says, we shall bring justice to these three creatures in here with fists. I, I Honestly, I kind of want to bring justice to them. Yeah. I Can mean, we bring I, justice to them? I'm, I mean, I'm, I'm down for some justice. Darmok, the one that was uh, asking for candy from Null, can see you through the doorway and goes, You got candy? Darmok's going to look in his bag. He's like, got like a little sugar cube for the horses. Do you, do you want the sugar cube? That gets you one rock. Oh, sweet. Those are Fucking dope rocks. rocks. I'm going to toss it the sugar cube that we were using for the horses. Sure. It'll fling back a strange rock back at you. Oh, sick rock. Rocks. Is it the same type of rock? It looks very similar to the first piece, but just a little bit different. Ooh. Man, I'm going to start. You know, honestly, I, I think I might start a collection. Hey, you know, everyone's got to have hobbies. Um... I guess um, seeing that yeah, they, they've done nothing, I guess, too ill, we can, uh, we can move on. <laughs> I'll let them sure. live today. 
Is there anybody else would like to interact with the weird mimic shop? There was the one that was asking for meat, right? Sure. <laughs> um, I have blood that's kind of like meat. You want blood? Blood's liquid meat. I that's worth some. That's worth one rock. Blood. Ooh, a rock. Yeah, it'll give you a strange rock. Uh, Leah, since this is your first encounter with rock, you are also allowed to make an intelligence check. Okay. Like how desperate you are for one of us to actually identify these. Please. I'm, 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 it's going to yes. be really funny. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, and I'm going to use, an uh, eight use uh, magical guidance and spend a sorcery uh, Don't point. do it. Roll that. <laughs> yeah, go ahead. Please yes. roll seven. Yes. <laughs> cool rock. Leah, you have a cool rock. I'm going to call you Dwayne Johnson. Leah, like, is it just me or these rocks dope as hell? I feel so secure in this yeah. party right now. Just like, I'm not actually the, the dumbest, you know? Maybe it's just... Shoshan, do you have any interest in uh, attempting to... Do I was say, do I see him? Is anyone showing me their rocks? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to show it to you, Shoshan. <laughs> like, hey, dude, check out this awesome rock we got. I don't even want to know what the rocks are at this and point. And you're looking honestly. for raw intelligence? <laughs> uh, if, uh, if, you, if you handle one of the rocks, if they bother to give you one of the rocks that they're handling, uh, you just make sure you give it back. Just make sure you give it back. Is anyone willing to give up their super sweet rock to let me see it or no? You know, on, honestly, you share, I believe in sharing. You can have one of these rocks. That's I'm going to hand him the first share rock. with the gold. That's fair. So well, crazy. look at that. Dan's is about time. <laughs> Shoshan, you get the general vibe that these cool rocks might fit together to form a bigger cool rock. Mm -hmm. Nice. I'm going to ask if they've all heard the story, uh, the, the legend of Voltron. The, the oh, oh, yeah, they're to a mega rock? Oh, Probably wait, we have to not. think. Oh, we have to do a non-copyrighted one. Um, of Rocktron. Rocktron. Sure. Um, you, I'll also tell you with a 17, Shashan, you realize that three pieces is not enough to make up the total larger cool rock. You would oh, need we gotta go approximately kill seven total rock pieces. Seven. Okay. Lives in shadow, and Darmok looks at you and is like, we're on the same page. We're going to go kill those. Kill they those are mimics. withholding rocks from us. <laughs> this makes them agents of chaos. I love Rocktron memorabilia. <laughs> Why does that make them agents as of chaos? They can, they can hear you. They're going to close the door <laughs> as you walk up. <laughs> nice. Nice. Oh. <laughs> well played. I will try to... How do, how sturdy does this door look? Oh, it's, it's a, a, it's a stone <laughs> as as most of the others. It is a stone door. Let's. I say we try to give give it give this thing some some justice. Yeah, I'll, I'll how str you're, you're stronger than me, so yeah. I'll let yeah. You... Do you want do you want to try and uh, try and help me with uh, breaking it down, or uh, I'll see if I have athletics. I do not have athletics. Okay. Well, I'm gonna try and uh, <sighs> give it the good old. Oof, man. No, nope. and people <laughs> wonder why adventurers are not welcome in most places. Yeah, the stone door is going to resist you as something is apparently trying to hold it shut on the other side. Uh, excuse me, would you like to get inside of there? Yes, honestly, I, I'm really obsessed with Rocktron mer merchandise. Like that would be pretty awesome if you did. Very well. In exchange for healing earlier, I suppose this is worth it. Could you kindly move? Very well. And one, and two, and. Noah's going to lightly tap on the door. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> yeah, with a 25, no, the door does in fact open. Um, and the readied, uh, the readied attack of uh, Quentin, the mimic that was holding the door shut, is going to try to pseudopod you. Will a 14 hit? Does not. I didn't think it would. <laughs> all right. Uh, since you're all interested in justicing them, I am going to need you to roll initiative. I, I try to incur try to trying to firebrand Leah and Shoshan that justice must be served to the agents of chaos. They hold the rocks at bay, hostage. Oh goodness! All right, Shoshan, what would you like to do? All right, we're going to five, ten, fifteen, twenty, twenty-five, thirty. Uh, I'm gonna get to there, and uh, I'm gonna go ahead and. Uh... It seems my compatriots want to go ahead and justice all over the place, so we're going to fairy fire. Sure. I assume you're trying to fairy fire essentially just the inside of the room? Yep. What we have essentially is uh, two of them are fairy fired, two of them are not. So the ones indicated with a purple dot, which is going to be Snarkle and Quentin, are fairy fired. Sticky is not fairy fired. 
Oh, poor Snarkle. Sticky Snarkle and Quentin, yes. All right, anything else you'd like to do, Shoshan? Yes, that's going to be my turn. Thank you. All right, no, you are up. Okay, uh, let's see if I remember how to do combat with this character. So we are going to step inside as okay. an object interaction, take out our sword, good old Starblade. Uh, as a bonus action, let's activate some fell damage as the blade starts growing with a sickly sort of green fire. Because mm -hmm. remember, Null is the bad guy. Uh, and it's going to turn around and take a swipe at who I think might be Snarkel. Uh, that's Quentin. Oh, well, poor Quentin. Uh, so Quentin is not very fired. Oh, he is. So. Oh, yeah, so you still have advantage, yeah. All right, advantage slice. Yes, with a 28, you do slash through Quentin's little 12 armor class. Uh, and with, uh, you do have the fell damage <laughs> added in. Yeah, oh yeah, uh, okay. I turned that on with the bonus action. All right, with that, let's see, 22, if my math is correct, the damage. All right, 22 damage to Quentin. He's looking really rough as he tries to pull himself back together with the eyes and teeth and tongues all in the right area. Okay, then we're going to take our second attack at poor Quentin. Oh, poor Quentin. Uh, a 24 will also hit uh, poor Quentin. Mm. And with 18 damage, that's plenty to kill Quentin. Uh, go ahead and call your kill. Uh, so, very lightly, he is going to step in uh, and kind of, like, turn to Quentin and just cut its tongue off right at the side and give him that tilt of the head and be like, I told you it tasted bad. And then he'll just take a step aside and bow and end his turn. Oh, good lord, that poor mimic. All right, great. Uh, now it is actually time for the mimics themselves. Uh, Sticky is going to roll towards you, Null, uh, not aware I'm of just how, how deadly you might be. And they're going to go ahead and try to hit you with their big old tongue. Uh, that is very much going to miss with an eight. Nope. All right. Uh, Snarkle is going to try to roll out the door if you'd like to make an opportunity attack. Yeah, I'm actually not. I'm good. Okay. So the on fairy fired Snarkle is going to try to make a pseudopod attack on Shosha. Uh, does a 23 hit, oh. Shoshan? Yes, it does. All right, that'll just be six bludgeoning. Okay. Uh, and on from that, then we're up with Leah. Leah, what would you like to do? Um, I just look at Lives in Shadow and Darmok and Null and all these guys. I'm like, friends, the only agents of chaos I see here are you. Look at the chaos you have wrought. There's only one way to end chaos with justice. But they haven't done anything. The they sending spell is coming from inside the mansion. <laughs> <laughs> Leah, would you like to make an attack, or are you just going to try to make an impassioned plea to your fellow adventurers? I'm just making an impassioned plea. <laughs> All right. So lives in shadow. Will you listen to Leah's impassioned plea, or will you take your turn? I'll. I'm going to take my turn. Oh, good lord. Go for it, lives in shadow. Having Dude, trained has a six intelligence. I don't know what you guys were expecting. <laughs> Full. Oh, I'm not. My, I'm not surprised at all. Is purely just to be able to hear where justice needs applying. Um, justice being the most subjective form of my life. I'm going to put putting on these kind of like gauntlets, so covering my claws for now. Uh, I'm going to start doing some boxing on this this poor box because it, it only seems to make sense to to listen shadow to box a box. I'm going to use a Justice Jab for my first, I forgot, to, or <clears throat> Baleful Fury wouldn't apply here. So doing a kind of like little setup punch and then trying to following it up with the cruise, or the Hero's Hook. It should have a plus three to the 14 for a 17. Uh, to... Both the 17 and the 19 will hit. Dope. All right. And for, let's see, I think that's a total of 11 damage. On the poor Snarkle. Well, I guess I, the first one would be actually 24 since you have advantage on both of these attacks. Because Snarkle Sweet. is fairy fired. Oh, right. Uh, and do they have to make a con save for this one? Yes. If they have uh, the ability to be fatigued, i.e., exhausted. Yes, they absolutely can take exhaustion. Um, that is going to be a 7. They will fail. All right. That's one point of exhaustion for Snarkle. And then I'll do my last from extra attack, because I can only replace one of my attacks with a boxing move, just for the final little punch. Yeah, a 24 will absolutely hit for another 6 bludgeoning damage. This one being a minus 2 because of Baleful Fury, finally doing, boom. 
that. Oh, right. A 20 will definitely still hit. Uh, poor uh, Snarkle has really been taking a lot of beatings. But they are still vaguely a very toothful box. I'll knock your teeth out, Agent of Chaos. That's my turn. <laughs> All right, fantastic. Dharma, keep us going for the end of the round. Um, Give me the rock, and I'm going to cast Mace on him. Um, sure. All right, so just doing a 12 with advantage, that will hit. Yep, all right. And he's still up with the... He with, uh, is he's... barely up with that eight bludgeoning damage. Well, you know, I'll, I'll use my um, I'll use my extra attack from War Priest because I have a few of them. And I will cast Mace one more time. With 22 and four bludgeoning damage, you manage to kill poor Snarkle. Go ahead and call your kill. Uh, yeah, you know, um, very similar to uh, everyone's favorite War God game, you know, the best way to open a box is just go right in through the top. So, yeah, just just drive it right in through, um, breaking and just sending the teeth flying. Fantastic. Very nice. All right. Nothing gets between Darmok and Rocktron merchandise. Sure. Like... Anything else you'd like to do, Darmok? <laughs> um, I'm going to take a step in and kind of get ready to kind of help, uh, help Null if he needs it. Sure. It's probably unlikely that Null will, but Shoshan, it is your turn. All right, uh, this one here has taken a hit, correct? Yeah, they all have. Uh, they all yeah, okay. were about half health due to Blasted. the mind blast. Oh, that's and right. No, just sort of those. softened up the room with very. Right yeah, 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 yeah. You're absolutely right. Okay, I'm gonna just go ahead and uh, told the dead on that. Okay, oh, very well. Here is a wisdom save from a sentient box. That is a natural uh, tw twenty for twenty-one. Yeah, we're going to go ahead and uh, reaction on that. Let's go ahead and uh, that's an attack roll. So let's do Chronal Shift. That he had to go back in time and not get his uh, philosophy degree. That is a you know? 14, <laughs> which uh, does in fact fail. All right, so we're going to take that 22 necrotic damage. Damn, 20. And that what are is, these damage rolls? That is the uh, only time you're able to use it this day, right? Uh, right. No, this one I get twice. That's right. That's that's part of Chronergy rather than your um, your Ori piece. That fun. Correct. Me, yeah. Mixing up the two of those abilities. No, you're good. I stacked a bunch of the same thing, really. Mm -hmm. Well, you are very timey wimey, so that works. Yep. Yeah. Uh, all right. Anything else, Shashan? Uh that's gonna be it. All right. No. What would you like to do to poor Sticky? Okay. Uh, hearing the impassioned plea to save the mimics, and Noel's a bit bored, so he'll, he's down to do something interesting. Uh, so he's going to just sheathe his blade as his object interaction and look at the mimic and just go, shh, go to sleep. Shh. Uh, uh, and mechanically. Yeah, hold on. yeah, I don't know. I'm, <laughs> right. I'm using the ability here. As long as it works. Work ability. I had it all. I'm, I'm very intrigued. On the edge of my seat. Go to sleep. sleep. Uh, so Noel can cast sleep. Oh, yes. By talking to things. <laughs> sure. So. He is literally going to tell it to go to sleep. What's very has... funny is with that 15 hit points of sleep, uh, Sticky had 14. So <laughs> uh, Sticky uh, immediately passes out and appears to not quite revert to a perfect chest, but instead a very toothy, tonguey eye full of eyeball chest that just appears to be asleep, uh, peacefully snoozing away. So because I love this ability, and by the way, this will explain how Null's skills are also high, as he has the philosophical background trait. Uh, which allows him to change certain skills with certain stats, which is why he can do well with athletics. Sure. And he can put things to sleep by talking to them. So, you know, it's always... Uh, explains time. why I always nod off whenever he starts rambling on. Exactly. So, <clears throat> so currently we have a an asleep sticky. Um, anything else you'd like to do, No? No, that's the end of his turn. It's asleep, so he's good. Well, on Sticky's turn, Sticky will continue to be asleep. So at this point, we're going to go ahead and take us out of combat. Uh, and what would you all like to do with an asleep um, mimic? I want those rocks. Come on, Dan. You know me. Sure. Uh, so we can just loot the rocks now there because are they're about, no shelves, right? There are about four more interesting rocks in the room, as well as two potions of greater healing. Um, I'm going to grab one of those potions of greater healing and toss it over to Lives in Shadow because I know he's still probably nursing of a... It's like a sleight of hand <laughs> check? No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah, but for uh, once you collect all of the rocks in the room, I'm going to need you to give me an intelligence check again, Darmok. All right. Ooh. Now, because I have 
established that I'm a Rocktron fan? Do I no, get a? There's absolutely <laughs> not. There's no way. Oh well, a 16. Finally, there you go. Yeah, with I've a read 16, all the Rocktron comics. Are you kidding? Uh, right. uh, with with that, uh, you do manage to fit sell seven pieces together, and what you end up with is a dodecahedron with dwarven runes on the side. Um, there are a number of dwarven runes. And then on the final one, there's a rune for victory. What kind of nerd device is this? I've never seen this shape before, ever in my life. <laughs> yep, there's, uh, I believe, 1 through 11, and then eight, and then instead of uh, number 12, there is a symbol for victory in Dwarven Rune. Ooh. Symbol for victory glows faintly. And do, did you say that was a potion of greater healing? Did that actually end Correct. up coming to me? Yep, potion oh, of I'm, greater healing. I'm going to drink it, because I'm really yes, wounded. please, absolutely. Slash. In some circles, they call those little goblin rocks. <laughs> goblin rocks. Darmok, since you're holding it right now, you feel it pulse for a second, and you feel a strange pull towards the southeast. Hmm. Guys, um, I'm going to be honest with you. Uh, I think this rock is telling me to go down to the southeast. Do not take advice from rocks. Lives in Shadow has done this twice. Very bad idea. Hmm. Hmm. Maybe the third time's the charm. You know, I like your thinking, Leah. Well, I'm, I, I'm, I'm, I'm probably going to start making my way down to the southeast. Uh, sure. As of right now, there's really just the corridor down the stairs to the south. A rock has never laid me astray. <laughs> uh, Darmok, are you just going to go down the stairs? Uh, you know, yeah. I'm going to start descending the stairs. Sure. Go right ahead. I'm going to turn invisible and fall on the wall. Oh, please Keep do. Please I'm do know. Staring at Soshan and your mastery of time. I'm I'm undecided as to whether or not that it's for order or for chaos. All right. As you approach the rubble at the bottom of the stairs, you see through that fissure, that gap between the stones, um, no, uh, as well as I think Darmok and a few other people, you notice and you hear a few hobgoblins uh, in armor standing with their backs to you uh, conversing in another language. Uh, and as... As you near towards them in that fissure, that is where we're going to take our break. Hi, everybody. This is Dungeon Master Race Frankhauser, and I want to thank you for taking the time to listen in and join us on this adventure. Here at Camp Dragon Online, we always have time for a game, thanks to the amazing tools made by Zoom and Roll20. And we want to invite you to join us. We are always welcoming new players of all skill sets and experience. Even if you've never played and would like to learn, our character creation sessions are currently free and include an introductory demonstration of the rules. We run a variety of campaigns and one-shots, starting everywhere from level 1 and advancing all the way to level 20. We have a wide variety of content for you to enjoy, created by our talented writing team, filled with more adventure than you thought possible. We look forward to seeing you at the table. 